It's Monday, February 15th, 2021. Wanted to make a video today and I want to touch base on a few topics. The first one being Texas and what is happening in Texas. Some really violent uh, car wrecks uh, out there in Texas on the interstate. Uh, just the other day, eight people killed, very violent uh, wrecks with uh, the weather conditions. My good friend Matt and my good friend Aaron uh, both texting me today about what's happening out there. Uh, Aaron, as you know, who's been on the show many times, a very, very good friend of mine, uh, you know, he's a state trooper, sent me some video today while he was driving um, on the roads out in Texas, piled up in snow, absolutely in insane to see Texas. It's not a state you think about snowstorms and black ice and Arctic blasts and violent car wrecks. It's just not the place where, where we typically think about things like that happening. And I bring it up because most people were not prepared because now 2.6 million people don't have power as the temperatures are hovering around zero, sub-zero. And you have over 2.6 million people uh, as of this morning without power. Uh, this is the worst possible time to not be with power, right? And, and I bring it up because my videos discuss preparation, not just financial preparation, but do you have enough food? Do you have enough water? Do you have the ability to uh, heat your home? Uh, or do you have the ability to cool your home down? Do you have enough water? Here, where I live in the desert, um, you know, we're at triple digit, uh, triple digit temperatures many months out of the year. Once we hit uh, uh, June, July, August, September, October, we're triple digits. And so, you know, we have to be prepared uh, if the power goes out here to cool ourselves down, to cool our homes down, have enough water. Um, in colder, colder climates, you know, you got to be prepared to, to, you know, heat yourself up. Do you have enough clothing? Do you have a jet boil? Do you have a, you know, a Coleman gas stove? Um, can you, you know, can you, you heat up food, get a hot meal? Can you heat up water and make coffee or tea? Uh, do you ha do you have the ability to to get your body temperature up? Here it's the opposite. You got to get the body temperature down. And, and, and my main concern here is having enough water, uh, having shade, um, just having a way to to cool yourselves down. Um, but when I see what's happening in Texas, and with the power outages, how many people uh, were prepared for this? And so this is another reminder, another example of how fast something can happen, whether it's a natural disaster or whether it's a man-made disaster, whether it's a financial disaster, whether it's a cyber attack, whether it's a grid down, whether it's an Arctic blast or it's a massive heat wave. Uh, do you have the resources? Do you have the ability um, to deal with it? And I think many people uh, we're not prepared for what has happened in Texas. So my heart goes out to these people. Uh, let's keep all these people in our prayers. Uh, Matt, Aaron, I hope all you guys are doing well. These guys are prepared. They're going to be fine. But it's the millions of people who aren't. Could you imagine uh, being in your house all day today with sub-zero temperatures um, and not knowing when the power is going to come back on? What if you're down two, three days without power. How many people can survive that? How many people have enough food? If you can't leave your house because uh, you're having a blizzard or there's black ice out there and it's just dangerous to be driving and you need to hunker down, how many people are prepared to do that uh, no matter what the circumstances are, whether it's rain, whether it's heat, whether it's an earthquake, whether it's, it's an Arctic uh, uh, blast, we must be prepared for anything. Cyber attacks. Uh, grid down, none of the power in your city works, water treatment plants are down. Do you have enough drinking water to get by for a week, two weeks, four weeks? These are things we all really gotta be thinking about. And then of course, you, you, you gotta think about the financial collapse that's coming and what that's gonna bring. So make sure that you're really uh, thinking outside the box right now. It's 2021, anything is possible. Article today on CNBC, oil hits crisis high as winter storms push demand and pose production risk. I think oil today, as when I checked, was over $60 a barrel. So it's climbing and we're seeing energy prices soaring throughout the country. Power bills to the moon. Chaos shock as electricity prices across U.S. explodes. This is on the hedge today. Uh, as people fall farther and farther behind, it's going to get more expensive at the pump. It's going to get more expensive to heat your home. It's going to get more expensive to cool your home down this coming summer. 
power bills are going through the roof. And uh, I can tell you, even at my house, uh, I'm seeing the cost of electricity going up. And remember, uh, most states are broke. So where do you think they're going to try to make up the revenue? Taxes uh, and, and utility bills. Um, it's just uh, going to be a really, really interesting time here in 2021 to see how this starts to, to play out. Uh, I was watching a video on social media earlier today. And uh, even though there is a rent moratorium, there are loopholes. And in this video, a landlord uh, uh, hired an eviction company to go and evict some tenants. They go there, they have to knock the door down. The tenants um, barricade themselves in another room with a refrigerator. The police show up uh, and uh, allow them access and to proceed with the eviction. Then guess what? Rena Center shows up because Rena Center uh, has rented uh, this family televisions, sofa, a couch, you name it. So now you got the sheriffs there, you got an eviction company, and you got rent a center there. And, and, and so uh, we're going to see some very uh, interesting times here in America as we're going to see more evictions. Evictions are going to skyrocket. At some point, the moratoriums will expire, and we are going to see millions of evictions take place. But watching Rena Center show up uh, to these people's home, uh, so people are literally broke, and they're renting televisions, they're renting sofas, they're 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 renting appliances. Uh, it, it's pure insanity where we are now in America. People are renting everything, and they're unable to even pay their rent. So uh, it's going to be very busy for these eviction companies. It's going to be very busy for Rena Center. Um, this is going to just be unbelievable what we're going to see uh, play out here. And I believe that by the time uh, we get a little deeper into 2021 here, maybe it's summer, maybe it's fall, at some point uh, these moratoriums are going to expire. I, I can't even believe uh, what people are doing today. They can't pay rent. They're so broke, yet they're renting, not buying, renting television, renting a couch, renting a sofa, renting uh, a wash machine. Uh, pure insanity. The Hedge today, a market crash and high inflation. Twin dangers ahead. Uh, there is no doubt markets are historically overvalued. And we are seeing inflation from the price. You can look at the price of housing, the price of rent. Um, the, the price of health insurance, the price at the grocery store, everything is going up. And so we are going to see these dangers um, expand even more than they are right now. Uh, but markets are overvalued. They are going to crash. And another market that is very overvalued is the housing market. We are going to see bubbles explode. We're going to see the crashes. Uh, we're going to see multiple crashes. Uh, this is just absolutely shocking with what we are watching take place. And yet there are people that believe that they are immune to all this. They believe that this is just normal. They believe that there's no manipulation, there's no bubbles, and they believe everything will end well. These people uh, are high on this euphoria and they are going to be so fooled and, and these are going to be the people, ladies and gentlemen, that I speak about on a daily basis that are going to be completely taken off guard, completely wiped out because they're ignorant and they are naive. If Look, more power to you if you're making money in these markets right now. I just hope and pray that you're taking some of that money off the table, off the poker table, and that you're buying real assets because you're going to need them for what's coming. Unfortunately, most people... Uh, who, are, who are just drunk on this euphoria will never step away from the poker table. They believe that they're smarter than the markets. Uh, newsflash, these people are not in the click, okay? You're not in the club. The people at the very top, the 1%, they're in the inside. They know exactly when to get out. Many of them have already gotten out. But these people will get out before the average Robin Hooder, the average American gets out. Those are the people that are going to pay the severe price here. Remember, the 1% will get out, the 99% will pay the price. The hedge today, indoor dining at 25% capacity is not enough to stay alive, New York City restaurants say. 
Uh, I was watching a video last night in San Francisco. Uh, they're not even allowed indoor dining, okay? Just like no indoor dining out here in Southern California in Riverside County where I'm at. Um, so it's all outdoor dining. In San Francisco, uh, I don't know if they're allowed outdoor dining as of today. I don't know what the situation is th up there, but here you're allowed outdoor dining. Uh, I don't. Uh, the video I was watching last night, uh, I don't think it was that old, and there there was no outdoor dining allowed. And and these restaurant owners are furious. But whether it's San Francisco or New York, uh, just think of the decimation. I, I mean, even if they open up at 25%. You cannot run a restaurant at 25% or 50% capacity. They must be open at 100. And in New York, you're dealing with weather conditions. Um, unlike here where I'm at, you can you can sit outside, have have uh, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and, 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 and the weather is cooperative. But um, you go to Chicago, you go to New York, uh, Midwest, East Coast, there's no way you can run a, a restaurant uh, sitting outside or 25% capacity inside. It's just not going to happen. So my heart goes out to, to these business owners. How many restaurants are we going to lose here in America? Um, there was a, a wine distributor that they interviewed uh, in San Francisco on this video, and she said 85 90% of her accounts are zero, done. Uh, then nobody's ordering anything, zero. Um, and, and so this is just gonna have such catastrophic effects, not just on the restaurant owner, but but what about the other people uh, in the industry, uh, from the person that sells the, the soda, to the person that sells the wine, to, to the other alcohol alcoholic beverages, to these restaurants, uh, the people that, that sell the food, the vegetables, the meats, uh, the seafood companies, um, everybody, uh, to, to, to the truck driver that delivers to these restaurants. There's no deliveries. It just goes on and on and on. Everything is, is interconnected. And so many people, not just the restaurant owner or the employees of the restaurant, but so many people connected to the industry who are, are just getting wiped out. Jim Rickards warns Green New Deal is already underway. This is also on the hedge today. As many of you know, the Keystone Pipeline has been canceled. This pipeline brings oil from Alberta, Canada down to the central United States. And the people working on the pipeline are greatly affected, but not just the people on the pipeline, but uh, you've got countless suppliers and contractors uh, that are connected to the pipeline also. We're talking around 100,000 plus jobs uh, that are involved with this Keystone Pipeline. When you take into account suppliers, contractors, and all the workers on the pipeline, these are high paying jobs. May these jobs pay 100,000 plus a year. Uh, high paying jobs in the energy uh, sector uh, are, are, are presently being destroyed. Fracking, shale, these jobs now are in the crosshairs. All this means that we're going to see more people jobless, unemployed in America, and we're going to see the price of energy soar. It's another bad combination here for Americans. But while uh, people um, on the pipeline lose their jobs, while contractors and suppliers uh, that work with that pipeline as they lose their jobs. Uh, here's some good news for everybody because everybody says this is doom and gloom. It's negativity, but here's some good news. Demand for used private jets takes off during the crisis. This is on the hedge. Uh, I think that came out last night. The 1% won't be affected by energy costs, but you will. So that's the good news for everybody. For the people out there that think that I'm being negative, that um, I'm just doom and gloom, the good news is the, the demand for used private jets is soaring. So as we have economic inequality, um, as we have uh, opportunity inequality soaring in America, uh, used private jet demand in the second quarter of 2020 increased. 2020 was a very good year if you were in the used private jet industry. Commercial airlines and the average American is in a depression. But the top 1% are traveling for leisure. They're traveling to those beautiful homes on those islands, the, the, the beautiful homes in Newport Beach. They're coming out here uh, to their beautiful homes on the golf course. Uh, so that's the good news. So there is some good news. The, the 1% are continuing to do well. So um, uh, as I close out this video uh, this late this, late this afternoon here, uh, kind of a 
gloomy day here in the desert, but still a beautiful day. Um, one last article I want to share with everybody, also uh, on the hedge. Desperate Americans who can't afford housing are becoming modern-day nomads, but, but not by choice. And uh, this article went on to just uh, show some pictures and, 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 and uh, talk to you about people living in their cars, living in their RVs. And uh, hopefully I'm going to get to L.A. here with Sid very, very soon. Because uh, there's a lot of people living on the streets, living in cardboard boxes and tents. They're living in their cars. They're living in dilapidated RVs. But even right here in the desert, uh, you don't have to go very far to see the RVs pulled off uh, on the side of the freeway off into the desert. RVs just sitting out there in nowhere, no, no man's land. Uh, tents uh, out there in no man's land just popping up. So I'm seeing tents pop up. I'm seeing uh, old RVs popped up on the side. These aren't. These aren't uh, snowbirds coming out here with three, four, five hundred thousand dollar, million dollar RVs. These are old, dilapidated RVs that are on their last leg, just out in the middle of nowhere land in the desert, uh, where people are living. Okay, I'm seeing tents popping up, and of course we've got homeless just, you know, living in cardboard boxes, sleeping on sidewalks all over the desert here. You don't have to go far to see it, but I am seeing uh, more people living in old RVs. And it is not uncommon to, to drive into a parking lot and see somebody sleeping in their car with all their belongings in that car. It's becoming commonplace, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, when I get to L.A. with Sid, hopefully it will be very, very soon, um, I'm going uh, to show you what's going on. I'm going to show you how people are really living right here in Southern California, the state of California, the, the richest state in the nation, uh, the fifth biggest uh, economy in the world right here in Southern, right here uh, in California, but I'm going to show you what's happening in Southern California, and it's happening up in Northern California, Central California. It's happening all over the state, but I'm going to show you how people are living, and it's not just a few people. It's um, it's a lot of people, thousands, thousands, 80,000 homeless people just in Los Angeles County, and that's a conservative estimate. They're not counting how many people are living in their cars and their RVs, but uh, this thing's going to get really bad, folks. And I hope every one of you is paying attention. I hope every one of you is preparing. Uh, uh, I pray for the people in Texas. And remember, we shouldn't just prepare for an economic collapse with gold and silver and having cash or if you're having cryptocurrencies put away, whatever you're doing, that's great. Getting out of the system is positive. But make sure that you're preparing um, for these other events, whether they're man-made, whether they're, they're natural disasters, uh, make sure that you're preparing with food and water and clothing and security. It's 2021. Anything is possible. Uh, if you think the economy's, economy was bad in 2020, you haven't seen anything yet. It's going to get worse. We'll get the job numbers, uh, the jobless numbers at the end of this week on Thursday. We'll see where they're at. I expect them to be over 700,000. Um, please comment down below. What's happening in your area? Is it improving? Are things opening up? And even when they do open up, is that going to be enough to save the small business owner? Is that going to be enough? We're not talking about how far behind the business owners in America are. 10, 11 months behind on rent and leases. Um, if they opened up tomorrow, uh, is that going to fix everything? We still have people losing jobs here, seven, eight, nine 900,000 jobs a week. Um, people just think that once everything opens up, that uh, some magic wand uh, is going to come out and uh, business in America, especially the small business owner, is going to be saved. Um, they're 10, 11, going on 12 months behind on rent and lease. Um, this is not coming back anytime soon. The question is, how much damage are we going to see? What kind of fallout are we going to see uh, when things eventually do open up? The amount of debt and credit destruction that's been done now in this uh, past uh, year of this going on, uh, this isn't g just going to be fixed overnight. And uh, remember, there's a lot of people just running on fumes now, a lot of businesses running on fumes. How are they going to make up for this lost rent? What happens to the landlords? What's going to happen to these banks uh, who haven't been paid? Somebody is going to have to pay sooner or later. We're going to see some huge economic repercussions taking place here as soon as these uh, moratoriums uh, expire. We're going to see a lot of people 
become homeless. We're going to see a lot of small businesses have to close down. Uh, they just cannot hang on any longer. And we have too many people now without jobs. Who's going to travel? Who's going to, who can afford to take a vacation? How many people can afford to go out and eat? It's going to be a new world here in America, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a new world. Make sure you are preparing because I really truly believe that we're gonna see some big events unfold in America. So don't be caught um, by surprise. Do not be caught off guard, whether that's uh, without food or water uh, or, or, or cash or assets or security. Do not get caught off guard here. Uh, big things are coming, be prepared. God bless you all, thanks for watching.